Hey guys, welcome back. So in the last lesson, we talked about just the basics of making schedules. And that provided us with this door schedule, which was based on our floor plan. And the steps that we took to make the door schedule are exactly what you can do for any component. So that means walls, doors, windows, furniture, roofs, anything that's a part of your project can be scheduled. But what about schedules where you don't want parametric information put into it? So say you want to make a lighting schedule, one that just has data and information in it, a schedule that is not based on our floor plan. Well, we'll show you how to do that in this lesson. We'll create a lighting schedule just as an example. The first thing that you're going to need to do is go up to the View tab at the top of the screen. Under the View tab, you'll go to the Create panel, and you'll select Schedule and Quantities, just like we did before. Now again, you can make all types of schedules based on what you need, uh, whether it's a material takeoff, a note block, or a view list. But for now, we're just going to focus on Schedules and Quantities. So we'll select that option, and the new Schedule wizard will appear. And this again lists all the different elements and components from which we can design our project. So we'll go into our list and we'll do lighting. Uh, we'll choose lighting fixtures here. But instead of schedule building components, we'll select schedule keys. What that means is that we can enter or key in any information that we want. So I'll change this key name to lighting fixture and hit OK. Now as you'll see in our fields, we don't really have much. You can see that key name is available and comments is already added. We probably want to add some more, which makes this a good time to introduce adding parameters. Now you can add parameters to almost anything and in a variety of different formulas, but primarily I like to add parameters when it's going to be a text field, or when it's a strict numerical value. So when you hit add parameter, you can see the parameter name, uh, you can set the discipline, basically what type of thing is it? Is it structural? Is it just a generic item? Is it designated by trade, like HVAC? And then under type of parameter, this is where you get to choose what the data value is actually going to consist of. We're going to keep it under text, and we're also going to keep the group parameter under text. But just note that you can make lots of changes in there. So let's say that we want to make this field the manufacturer. We'll enter that as the parameter name and then click OK. And you can add as many as you need. Uh, let's go in and add another parameter. We'll change it to text. And let's say I want to make it fixture type. So we'll press OK again. Um, let's go ahead and add key name as well. And you can pretty much add any field that you want. And once you've created these new fields, if you go into sorting, you can sort by all of them as well. Normally with something like this, I'd go with fixture type. So I might have an F1 fixture type, F2, F3, F4, and I'd key them in on my plan as such. And under formatting, you can change the heading, the orientation, the alignment. Same with appearance. Basically, all the different properties that you can change with a schedule, you can customize with schedule keys. The real difference is that a basic schedule includes what is actually included in your model, while schedule keys allow you just to make a chart of information. So now we have our components, which are good for now. I'm going to move my fixture type up since that's my sorting key. We'll click OK, and then you'll see it creates our lighting fixture style schedule, which I'll just change to lighting fixture schedule. Now unlike with scheduled data, you can actually insert columns and insert rows. Now, depending on what type of data you're inserting, with scheduled data you can sometimes insert columns, but you can't insert rows. This is one of the advantages of doing a non-parametric schedule, because you can enter any information you want. So the fixture type I'll input is F1. The comments, I actually want them at the end. So I'll go back into Edit Fields and make the comments the last field. And while I'm at it, I'll move key name up. All right, and now I'll put in my key name. Um, I'll call it Luxor Fixture. All right, and the manufacturer will be Luxor. And 
And for the comments, we'll say GC to install based on manufacturer specifications. Okay. Now, obviously, I'm just putting in random data. Whatever you put in is going to be contingent upon your needs and what your project actually is. And now I'll go ahead and add in another row. Um, now I didn't want it above. Uh, okay, so if I want the row to be below, I'll have to delete this row and insert the new row below the existing row. So what I will have to do is select the existing row and then go to the insert option and insert it below selected. Okay, that doesn't appear to be available. Um, okay, I know what to do. We will insert a row and then we'll just call the fixture type F2. And once you put it in there, you'll see that our new row gets pushed down to the second spot. And again, this is because of how we set up the sorting for our schedule. That is, ascending by fixture type, both numerical and alphabetical. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill in the key name and the manufacturer. Remember, these are just made up values. They're just for demonstration. One important thing to note here is under the comments. Once you've already put in a comment, you can click the drop arrow to fill in the comment section with any comment you've already made. And in fact, that applies for any field in a schedule. Um, another thing worth mentioning is that you can insert images into your schedule if you have an image of the particular item and you want to include it. So just remember, as you click into the schedule, you have a great deal of flexibility in formatting it, changing borders, and making whatever changes you need. Alright, we'll see you in the next lesson.